Welcome to the Thrive Today podcast. I'm Natalie Bourne. I'm the media host for Thrive Today and the founder of Innovation Meets Leadership. We are a podcast for women who lead and believe. And today we are talking to Christy Norizzi. Christy is a dedicated advocate for financial literacy. So I'm excited for you to hear from her today. She's committed to helping people understand the relationship with money and also their financial mindset. She's published two books, Finishing Finish Financially Free, and then also First Home, Where to Start and How to Win. And she also has a podcast called Credit Coaching by Christy. Welcome to the podcast, Christy. Thank you so much. I'm just thrilled to be here. Well, I wanted to learn a little bit about your backstory and what caused you to have this passion to help people with financial literacy, so much so that this is a topic that you frequently write and speak on. I have been in the real estate and finance industry for about 22 years, but even before then, just was deeply ingrained with the servant's heart. My uh, parents pastored and, and served missionaries. And so from the very, very start, I got to learn how to serve others well. And so I think this is just the route, the avenue that I've taken to be able to learn as much as I can and be able to share it with others. I started my journey. We were very, very poor and broke. Two very different things, right? But we were both of them. And I learned in my 30s that what we learned as little kiddos, four, five, six years old, those lessons that are often more caught than taught. Mm -hmm. My parents didn't know about money, so they couldn't teach me about money. But I learned those lessons and I found myself living into what I believed to be true. And here I am, 30 something years old. I'm broke as a joke. Although I have a, a decent income coming in, I'm spending as much as I'm making. And I realize this is not the life I want to live. If I go out with girlfriends for a, a night out, I don't want to have to order off the appetizer menu. <laughs> I want to do what I want to, to do. And I didn't have any freedom in that. And so I really started doing some deep, deep work and learned that what my beliefs were based on were these lies that I believed to be true from a very young age. So once I started exposing those lies and working through what can now be my truth, I found that I was able to live very, very differently. And then as a mortgage loan officer and a finance expert, I'm seeing this repeat over and over and over again with my clients that I am in conversation with. I've literally analyzed thousands of credit reports at this point in my career, and I see some habits and attitudes showing up that are reflective of things that others were taught at a young age. And I learned I've got to do something different and knowing what I know, I've got to share it. So mm -hmm. that is what sparked the credit coaching by Christy to teach them fundamentals about credit. And that's what started my writing a couple books. <laughs> Well, you know, what I find so interesting about your story is I feel like we can all relate to that. And and honestly, I feel like teaching about financial literacy really wasn't, a, at least when I, when I was growing up, I feel like it wasn't really a topic that people were talking about very frequently. So we were making a lot of big mistakes and we were just kind of flying by the seat of our pants or you know, I even think about the fact that, you know, when I got into college, what's what's right there on your college campus, right? It's the person ready to give you that credit card with a 19 to 22 percent interest rate. Okay. And that's how most, you know, people in their teens get introduced into the world of finances is by running up a credit card that they should have never had in the first place. And Learning the hard way. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just like, you know, how needed this information is just given just think, even thinking about your history, my history. This is an area where we can all get better. And and I don't feel like it's something you stop learning. I feel like it's a lifelong thing of just walking through how to be better in these areas. Absolutely it is. And so I want to talk a little bit about your, so your history, your background kind of helped you to understand that you needed to make a shift. You needed to make a change. What were some of the first things that you personally did when you, when you said, okay, I'm, I'm shifting out of this lane where I kind of just live paycheck to paycheck and I'm shifting to a different lane where I want to have a strategy behind, you know, what I'm doing, what I'm making, how I'm spending money. What were some of the first things that you were like, hey, the, this has to change? Great question. So first things first, there's mindset and then there's action. So I had to change my mindset and my beliefs about money. One of the really deeply ingrained, ingrained uh, lessons that I learned, which I made truth, but it wasn't truth, 
based on what my parents are doing, they were doing so much great in the world. And their example to me, the story that I made out of it was I could do good in this world or I could make money, but I couldn't have both. Because my example didn't reflect both. Mm -hmm. So when I learned I can do good in this world and I can make money, there's something that shifted inside of me. And now I could see my value. I don't think that I could really see my, my true worth. For some reason, I had attached my self-worth to my net worth. And at that time in my life, it was definitely a negative net worth. I wasn't even breaking even. But those two things aren't true. They're not connected. And my identity isn't in my job or in my work. And when I could separate myself from that and just see, I'm a good, I need to be a good steward of the gifts that I have. And, and we're called to multiply. And I can't multiply what I don't have. I was so in debt. I had uh, four or five credit cards that were maxed to the guild. And so being able to make that shift allowed me that space to start in action with something different. So I sought out a higher paying job where they saw my value. I also got two side hustles. I had a second job on the weekends. I had a side hustle at night because I was getting out of debt. And so I, I traded in my car. I got a, a cheaper car so I didn't have a massive car payment. I worked and hustled for a couple of years until my credit cards were paid off. And then I started behaving differently. We're very short-sighted as human beings. We want right now. And instead of being able to gratify, satisfy that immediate want, I created a plan for the larger things that I wanted. Okay, I want to buy a house. When do I want to ha have that house? When do I want to be moving into it? And then what do I need in order to get there? And as a mortgage loan officer, I, I knew how to make those uh, numbers work. So if that's a goal for somebody listening, talk to a loan officer and find out what uh, that financial goal is in order to meet that for your time frame. But make sure your mind is right too, because you're going to have to sacrifice. I had to sacrifice some other things. In this case, I sacrificed my time because I had to uh, to work to get out of corrupting, remedying the, the mistakes I already made. So that mindset shift allowed me to get into action. Mm -hmm. And then now that I see my self-worth, it's not a tied to a number or a job title or anything else. Now I was able to deliver more value, which made me more valuable in the marketplace. But if wow. we don't show up different, right? If we look like everybody else, <laughs> then we can't do what we're really called to do, which is to be generous givers to others. And that's all I wanted to do. I wanted to be able to tithe. I wanted to be able to support uh, really amazing organizations that were doing great work. I couldn't even afford, you know, those little compassion boxes at Christmas time where, mm -hmm. you, yes, I couldn't even afford to fill that up at one point in my life. And that, that thought of not being able to walk into the Dollar Tree and and fill up a shoebox, right. devastating. Like mm -hmm. something has to change. Yeah. Wow. That's so powerful. You know, I as, as I listen to you talk, I, I think about the John Maxwell quote, and I had to look it up because I didn't want to butcher it. I can be an a extreme butcherer of quotes. and I didn't want to do that. You know, it's it's what I hear you saying is, is his quote, which says, you know, people change when they heard enough that they have to learn enough that they want to or receive enough that they're able to. And I love what you're talking about here because I even think about, I had kind of like kind of a, a situation a long time ago in my first marriage where, you know, my husband left. I was with a one-year-old and all the debt, like all of it. And I remember sitting there and saying, God, if you can help me get out of this situation, I had you know, like you said, debt up to the guild. And I just asked the Lord in that moment, like how, how, you know, what do you want me to do? And it was a process of cutting up credit cards. It was a process of getting educated. It was a process of reeling, realizing that living paycheck to paycheck or credit card, you know, statement to credit card statement was not the way to live my life. And I had to really look at it. I was hurting enough that I knew I had to change and I wanted to change. And so I just love what you're leaning into because I feel like, you know, that Part of what you talked about in your Thrive Today article is that money can affect our emotions and our well-being, and it can also affect relationships with our emotional state, right? So when we get ourselves into these situations financially, and then any emergency comes up, anything comes up, now we're kind of in this constrained position. And I remember being there myself and realizing, I don't want to live like this any longer. And it was a couple of year process of kind of digging myself out of that hole with God's help. But it doesn't happen overnight when we decide it's time to change. That's absolutely right. And that, that's, that's great counsel. It's not going to happen overnight. 
But, you know, rough seas make strong sailors, you know? So if we can weather this storm, we can weather any storm. But, you know, it, it's, a, it's a compilation of a lot of decisions that get a lot of people to where they're at. I just read last week that the average consumer debt in America is over $90,000. And I know right now with student loans coming back into repayment after over three years of them being on, on pause, the average car payment being well over $700 now, APRs on credit cards being somewhere around 27% APR, we're drowning. Yeah. And it and it, it takes a toll on our health, on our sleep, on how we parent, on how we show up as an employer or an employee, how how we engage with our friends and our family. It shows up everywhere. It can really feel worrisome. It can cause health problems. Yeah. It can cause a lot of stress. Over twenty percent of divorce is chalked up to money, and I don't believe it's about. Money. I think it's a misunderstanding of our own beliefs about money. Right. So I had shared with you, I had this belief that I could do good or I could make it, but I couldn't really have both. Well, until that was exposed, here I am behaving a certain way with money. And my husband is the opposite. <laughs> so about 75% of couples are opposite. And if you don't understand what your own beliefs are based on your environment and really what was just kind of demonstrated to us, mm -hmm. How do we have a conversation with our partner yeah. that is is one that's powerful and saying, okay, this is this is what I thought about money, or this is how I think about money, and and being able to have that conversation. If we don't have that conversation, we're just going to keep butting heads because opposites can cause conflict. But it really was intended, I believe, to to cause to create balance. But a, and, until we can get to that conversation where it's open and it's safe, and it's like, okay, I now understand based on how you were you know, how you grow up, how your caretakers taught you, why you believe that, you know, you see somebody behaving a certain way about money and you're like, why is this guy so showy? But this so showy because, you know, when he was eight years old, he never had a new pair of clothing on his body right. and maybe a ramen noodles, you know, and maybe yeah. doesn't ever want to feel that way again. So having those things creates a feeling that's very far from what was somebody's, you know, reality. So just getting in touch with those feelings and then being able to talk about it is really a powerful place. And it can really help protect our mental health as well as our physical health too. Wow. And I, what I hear you saying too, is there's such an important balance to this. I mean, it's, it's really understanding your past, but then also understanding what God wants for you. And I think sometimes we can live in that poverty mentality, that poverty mindset that says, okay, if I'm a believer, if I'm this, I can't, you know, have anything nice. And it's not about us having something nice. It's about that nice thing having us. And so just being able to kind of pull that apart, I think is such an important part of the journey that you went on as well. That's an incredible point that you just made. So I really believe God wants us to be prosperous and enjoy because when we can enjoy, we can share it with others. But I think sometimes the lessons that we hear, even in Sunday school as children, if, if you were raised in the church, could get very confusing. So I heard a pastor not too long ago talk about how we want to be more like Jesus, but we have this image of Jesus that he was poor. Mm -hmm. He didn't have a home. He didn't have anything. He didn't, he didn't have any material goods, but he, he was setting an example, not of one of, of, of lack and fear and need. He, he didn't need for anything. His father took care of all of his needs. So sometimes we tend to collapse what we think Jesus was representing with just when he was here on his mission. But that doesn't mean we're not to have a home and we're not to be prosperous. I really do believe that we are given gifts to multiply and that intention to multiply so we can give to others to be able to tithe, but then to even give even more than that. Somebody a long time ago had shared with me that their goal, and I've, I've taken it in as my own, I want to live off of the third, save a third, and give a third away. Wow. Wouldn't that be extraordinary oh, if I had enough with one third and yeah. then create a future where in my days when I'm no longer earning and working for my income, that I have it there ready to sustain me so that way I can go and do the things that I want to do. I could, if I wanted to just be a full-time volunteer and no longer have to work for, for money, I've got that ready and created 
waiting there for me. And then to be able to give it a third, a third away, that lights me up. Yeah. And so that, that's been my mission. Not quite there yet. Not quite there, but I'm working towards it. And yeah, I love that you have goals for this though. I think so many times we don't have goals for how we want our money to be put, put into action. And I love that. Like you, like your vision, your goal is a third, a third, a third, like, man, that, that drives your behavior. It changes what you do because you have a vision. And so many times we don't have a vision for our money. That's, that's absolutely true. And we're stewards. We're not owners. It's not mine. (laughs) That's so good. So talk a little bit about, let's talk a little bit about just overall money habits, like money management habits. What would you say are a couple of things that we can start to think about today in terms of just money management in general? A couple of things that stand out for today. Look at how much of your income is going towards your housing cost and how much is going to your car. When I just recently did math for a couple of clients, there's somewhere between 16 and 20% of their take-home income is going just to their car loan. And it really should be more in line of about 10%. And your ultimate goal is to get rid of that car loan. I drive a 2015 car, but you wouldn't know it's a 2015. She's beautiful. She runs well. I take good care of her and I'm going to run her into the ground because she's paid off. <laughs> right. I swear a paid off car drives so much better than one with a, a car payment. That's right. Um, but but look at how much you're spending on on housing and your car. And right now I'm I'm in the real estate industry. I realize just how tough it is with our housing costs, but um, if you can keep those two things in check, so your housing cost should be around 30% mm-hmm. of your take-home pay and your auto, if you have an auto loan or auto expenses, around 10%. And if you cut credit card debt, pay those babies off as quickly as you can. That has increased over 8.5% in the last two years because the prime index rate, which is what credit cards are attached to, has gone up 8.5% because it's really attached to the Fed funds rate that has gone up all of these times over the last two years. And the Fed's going to meet one more time to see if they are going to raise it here in the the very near future. A lot of people are paying four or five, six hundred dollars a month in interest on credit cards that aren't being paid off uh, in full. Unfortunately, the average credit card that gets rolled forward as far as a balance is around $20,000 right now. Yeah, so if you write our DPR, it's uh, it's about uh, six hundred dollars a month in interest. So wow. if we can eliminate that, could, how powerful could that be for you? If six hundred dollars could go towards something else instead of just the interest on your credit card, maybe eliminating that car debt, something along those lines. And then, so on your daily habits, look at some of the things that you can cut out. There's some luxuries that we've been enjoying over the last couple of years when, you know, everything has been very lucrative for a lot of people. So where can you cut or shave down that could save you some money? Maybe you have a daily trip to the local coffee shop. Maybe you dine out three, four times a week and you can shave it back to maybe one or two times a week. Maybe you do Uber Eats and you can just swing by some place on your way home. I think meal planning is so significant. So my husband loves football. Football. He's watching football on Sunday afternoons. I'm I'm prepping my meals for the rest of the week, and that's shaped up hundreds of dollars uh, a month because of just putting a little bit of thoughtfulness into what I want to consume. Wow, that's so powerful. I mean, honestly, you you're inspiring me. I'm like, I need to go to the grocery store this weekend. I need to plan out my meals because that that is such a big deal. When we look for where to to cut money, we first start looking at how much we eat out because we can start to get into the grind of, oh, I'm too tired to go home and do something. But like you said, if you can start planning that out over the weekend, then you don't get into that bind where everyone's starving and you just, you go for what's easier versus what's more affordable or cost effective. So I would love for you to just share, you have those two resources. I'd love for you to hold those books up so we can see them, tell us about each one of them. Yeah, first tome, Where to Start and How to Win was my first book. I published that in 21 and that was, it's really geared for first-time home buyers. So there's obviously a financial commitment, but there's also a really big emotional commitment. So are you even ready to own a home? Because it's it's so much more, it's very, very different than being a, a tenant and being able to go to your landlord for something. So are you emotionally ready? Are you financially ready? And then if so, how do we win? 
So I teach you how lots of things that could save you thousands of dollars in negotiations, what to look for to help eliminate what a lot of first time home buyers would say are mistakes after the fact and uh, answer questions that you didn't even know to ask. And then I teach you because most people go with a 30 year mortgage, how to shave that 30 year mortgage down to about 23 years just by setting up biweekly payments with your loan servicer. So it's your full mortgage payment, but instead of paying it once a month, you set it up where it's a, a direct debit every other week. And just the way that the weeks fall, you wind up making 13 full payments in 12 months, and it eliminates tens of thousands of dollars of interest and about wow. seven years worth of payments. It's extraordinary. Lots of little tips like that to help you win when it comes to buying real estate. And then this one, I just uh, had published August of this year, and it's finished financially free. And really, it, it's identifying our money beliefs. We have these deeply ingrained beliefs from this young age, and then it's kind of confirmed again as we become adults. I will never forget when I moved to Tallahassee to go away to college, and on Wednesday afternoons, I would go to the local pizza place because they had a one-topping $3.99 large pizza, and that was my dinner Wednesday night, breakfast, lunch, dinner Thursday, and breakfast on Friday to get me through to payday. That's like how broke I was. <laughs> I never want to experience that again. And so I just was on this quest to learn how do I master those beliefs? How do I break the chains of generational beliefs? My father was born in 1935. So he was a product of the Great Depression. He didn't intend on teaching us scarcity mindset, but that's what he was raised with. And so it just it showed up in his words and his actions. Wow demonstrated on just how my parents had their relationship with money. And so to overcome that, create our own story, our own belief, and create a new relationship with money moving forward, one that's powerful for who you are today and to be in charge of your money rather than your money being in charge of ourselves. It's it's yeah. um, flipping flipping the script, if you will. Yeah, I love that. And I love that Today, you've just given the women empowerment. You've given them some things to, to think about, but also those beautiful resources. I can't tell you how important it is to get those in your hands. So don't just listen to this. Go out and, and get these resources, especially if you're in the process of buying a home, especially if, you, if you're someone that needs to begin to live financially free. This stuff matters. And I tell you what, it makes, it makes or breaks, you know, even just a small emergency coming up. If you have, if you're riddled with debt versus having a savings account, right? Having something saved, it just makes or breaks what you're able to do financially. Christy, where can people find and follow you and also find these resources? Thank you. I'm on almost every social media platform as Credit Christy. And really, I did that because I'm hopeful that sometimes when people go in and type up Credit Karma, Credit Christy will be the next drop down. So it's in front of push credit cards your way. I'm going to teach you about money and be in charge of it. So you can find me on Credit Christy pretty much everywhere out there. I'd love to, to connect you with you that way. My books are available at Books A Million, Barnes & Noble, on Amazon. And uh, I'd, I'd love to just be a resource for uh, these women who just want the best of what has been gifted to us and, and how we can know how to live and work being the master of our money. Love that. Christy, will you pray for us as we get ready to close today? I'd love that. Oh, Heavenly Father, we just thank you. We thank you for your love, for choosing us, for just expressing your love through all your ways. Help me know that you use everything for your good. And even my decisions that I know I'm in charge of and 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 turn the course of my life, you say, child, I've got you. And I will use this even when it's tough. Now we just ask for an extra special scoop of blessing for anybody who's listening to this right now who might be feeling worrisome about their finances, about how this is affecting their family, losing sleep about what to do and how to do it. God, that they just seek you and that you just open up doors. God, paint to billboards so we know it's your will that you'll just express and show and apply abundance so we can let go of fear so we don't have to feel like we need to live in scarcity God, so we can show up different in the world and give and love and be generous to others in your name giving you the glory 
Uh, we just ask that you help remove any barriers, generational beliefs, thought systems that keep us crippled or tied up. Would you just break us free of that today and allow us to see what will you have for us, what prosperity you have waiting if we just say, yes, God, yes, I will follow what you say in faith and not fear. God, we ask this in your son's holy name, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This has been so awesome, Chrissy. Thank you so much for your time today. Oh my gosh, thank you so very much. This has been such an honor. Well, look, ladies, if you haven't taken the time to get into community, I want to take a moment to ask you, what are you waiting for? Head over to thrivetoday.com and learn all about our community. You can learn more about people like Christy who write in our Thrive Today journal and, of course, connect with our podcasts and all of our content around Thrive Today. And of course, ladies, as you live your life, don't forget to thrive. We'll see you next time.